A new pro-Putin symbol is doing the rounds on social media and on the streets of Russia. It's the letter Z. You can see it in this pro-war video currently going viral. The Z was initially painted on Russian armoured vehicles moving into Ukraine. Military analysts have suggested that the point of the Z symbol was to protect Russian equipment from friendly fire, with different markings indicating which infantry they belong to. Others have suggested that it stands for Zapobedi, which means victory. But now the symbol is being used to express general support for the war on Ukraine. Russian drivers have started displaying the Z on their cars. This is a pro-war rally outside Moscow shown on Russian state TV. You can see the Zs emblazoned on the windows. And business owners have attached it to their vehicles to show that they're Putin supporting. This is a van for a funeral home, though the exact location within Russia is unconfirmed. Here's the symbol again, this time painted on a bus stop in St. Petersburg, and it's even appearing at pro-occupation rallies in Serbia. We can also see the Z on an ad in the St. Petersburg metro. The slogan says, we don't leave our own. And these are terminally ill children and their parents outside a hospice in Kazan. They've lined up to form an enormous Z. We can also see now an image which shows Russian soldiers form the letter Z from the badges of killed Ukrainian soldiers. Really grim. And Russians are also being encouraged to display the symbol on their clothes. This is Maria Butina, a former Russian spy who was convicted on espionage charges in the US in 2019 before being deported back to Russia later that year. So encouraging Russians to wear the Z on their clothes. The symbol has also appeared on the international sporting stage. Um, Russian gymnast Ivan Kuliak won a bronze medal on the parallel bars at the Gymnastic World Cup in Doha, but he was beaten to the gold by Ukrainian Ilya Kovtun. Before stepping onto the podium, Kuliak taped the Z symbol to his chest and stood smirked next to the Ukrainian champion. He's facing disciplinary action from the sport's governing body. It's an attempt to market war. That's what it is. Uh, it's clearly organized or administered from, from Moscow, from the presidential administration. We've seen similar uh, seemingly bottom-up things happening across the country for many political cycles, political um, issues happening in Russia. Um, I don't know the, the size of that movement. I mean, we are seeing, of course, it you know, appearing in, uh, in the streets of almost every city. You have some celebrities um, using that symbol, but again, this is nothing compared to your usual, for instance, we only a few years had a somewhat legal procedure that was called referendum uh, about the constitution. Not very legal, not very referendum, just a kind of questionnaire whether you like yeah, the amendments in the constitution. And there was a lot of support by celebrities, TikTokers, YouTubers. Um, in most cases, journalist investigations would tell you that those people were paid for that uh, to kind of showcase their support for state cause. I would presume that now we have some groups that or some people that would get those signs and um, quite uh, voluntarily tape it to their cars as they see it, you know, supporting Russian troops. Um, this is basically what the Americans were doing during the uh, Afghan or Iraq war, you know, with the support of the troops. But here they just came up with this 
that simple. I mean, uh, to my taste, is kind of uh, fascist-like, and I don't quite see how in, in Russia people don't actually see that in those video clips, the ones that you show, for instance, or there are a few others where basically you have someone screaming something angrily and a crowd of people there in lines, you know, ready to go. Um, this is an attempt to to show the widespread support for the cause. But from talking to people across across the nation, I know that there are a lot of people who don't like the symbol and don't like what it represents. Uh, but again, as I've noticed before, there's the situation of fear and uh, getting into conflict over these Z stuff is something that a lot of people will try to avoid. I mean, I, I suppose you've said you, you don't see how people don't realize it looks a bit fascistic, but is is that potentially the direction this is going in? Because, I mean, one interpretation was that Putin wanted to win this war quite quickly. He didn't think there would have to be a sort of popular mobilization and for Russia to enter into a sort of total war scenario. But now it looks like it's going to be a bit tougher. He's going to need more people to fight. It's going to take more resources. The sanctions are going to kick in. And now he does need to create a sort of total war society whereby there is sort of widespread buy-in to this war. He can't just say, oh, it's something that's going on in there in Ukraine. It's going to be a special operation with just a few soldiers. We'll win it quickly. Don't worry about it. Now he has to say, okay, this is a massive war. You're all going to have to be involved. Let's get involved. Is is this the kind of operation we're going to see now from, from Putin going forward? Well, we've already seen a number of state officials saying that, look, we have to stand behind our leader. This is the time to stay united. We have to be, you know, one people, one nation, one cause, um, that type of rhetoric. So it is inevitable. That's, of course, they will try to mobilize and they're already trying to, to mobilize the population, uh, with the propaganda, uh, and using all the, all and every, um, comparison to World War II. Russia's fight with Nazis as kind of this essential uh, fight of good versus evil, and Russians, of course, being the good here, and the Ukrainians, or not actually the Ukrainians, but the the Nazis that uh, or the the Americans that are using the Nazis in Ukraine to fight Russia, and Russians are fighting those Nazis, but they're also fighting Americans at the same time, who kind of represent the evil. So they're trying to to get those narratives into the um, to the widespread public and by showing their support, it kind of creates the illusion that Russian society is ready to endure what it has to endure. Well, in fact, I think, and I know for a fact that the the vast majority of Russians have no idea what is coming, at least in terms of the uh, economic cost of the war, because sanctions introduced have been absolutely unprecedented. Mm -hmm.